Hello everyone and thanks for joining our live demonstration of AI-powered search for Salesforce. My name is Clara Boulanger, I work on the marketing team here at Coveo and I'm really excited to be a part of today's session. I'm also thrilled to, be, to introduce our solution engineer on the call today, Brad Phillips. I have a couple of housekeeping items to cover quickly before we get started. First, everyone is in listen-only mode. However, we do want to hear from you during today's presentation. Please feel free to send your questions along using the Q&A section on your screen. Today's webinar is being recorded and you'll receive the presentation within 24 hours of the conclusion of the event. Finally, there will be a brief survey at the end of the session. Please help us improve future webinars by providing your feedback on the content and experience. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the live demonstration of AI-powered search for Salesforce. Now, in this demo, we will cover great examples of Coveo's integrated solution within Salesforce communities and Salesforce Service Cloud. However, keep in mind that this solution can apply to any CRM or platform, as we have close integrations with other environments as well. Now, let's dig in. So why Coveo and why does AI-powered search matter? Well, when people think of search, they usually think of a query to content type of relationship. Well, Coveo actually goes beyond that as it brings relevance to every interaction with your customers, partners, and employees. Now, this is known as an insight engine. So the insight engine has the ability to deliver relevancy at scale on top of your Salesforce platform. This is done in a very personalized and contextually aware way. Coveo leverages a sophisticated artificial intelligence-based engine that learns from previous digital journeys of how people interact with your content in order to provide the most relevant, best answers and recommendations without having to manually tune the platform or system. So why Coveo? Well, if you haven't already seen it, Coveo has been recognized as the most visionary leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Insight Engines report for July 2018, and we're pretty proud. As I mentioned earlier, Coveo goes well beyond traditional search by bringing relevance to every interaction. While Gartner recognizes the shift in the marketplace and acknowledges Coveo as a clear leader in the Insight Engine space. If you would like to see a copy of the report, feel free to reach out to us or to visit our website and you'll find it easily. Now, not only do we have a great integration and very strong alliance with Salesforce, Salesforce is also a great customer of Coveo. For example, when you go to the Salesforce support communities, you're using Coveo to find answers. Coveo has helped Salesforce triple their case deflection and you can imagine how this represents a tremendous savings for them. So now, what is Coveo and how does it add to this value? Well, on this slide, we have a breakdown of how Coveo brings relevance with unified search powered by machine learning. So what you see here is what we call the Coveo formula. So first on the left, you can see the unified index. Coveo's index securely connects to all the external sources outside of Salesforce through a robust set of connectors and tools and brings the content into a single index for unified search, search experience. Then we take the search experience and integrate it within the Salesforce app where the user is. We combine this with the context of the user. So for example, what is the user trying to do? What apps does the user use? Um, it could be for an agent using a service cloud app or, for example, a customer self-serving on the community cloud. If the user is authenticated, we're able to pull in a ton of CRM data. Things like pulling data from their profile, understanding their purchasing history, etc. If they are, however, not authenticated, we're still able to gather a bit of data about them. We then combine all of this with behavioral data to observe what's worked for other cores courts and users like them with their clickstream analysis and Coveo search analytics in order to determine what will be their most relevant content and then their next interaction. So now the AI part is where we bring relevance with the power of machine learning. So remember, as I mentioned before, it's no longer just about search. We bring machine learning on top of the search experience to learn from user behavior and offer the Amazon-like relevant experiences to your users, such as predictions and recommendations. Now let's talk a little bit about the, some of the problems we help you solve. First, 
we have multiple org creep. So you may have different Salesforce orgs in your organization where each one has its different content. So we unify all of this content into one index for all Salesforce instances. Now content overload. You may have an issue with disparate creation of content sources such as YouTube, Jira, website content, and more, and do not have a unified way to search across them. Third, no visibility into usage. Well, you may, you may have no way to see what your users are actually consuming in terms of content or no real insight into the effectiveness of your systems. So it's really hard for you to create a content strategy or knowledge management strategy and to make your content better over time. The need for personalization. Well, that's a big one nowadays. So people now, and you on the call as well, are used to the tailored experiences we're being offered by apps or websites we use every day, such as Netflix or Amazon. So when you're doing business with a vendor or a partner, you're expecting the same experience, and so are your customers. You need to provide, to provide personalized and relevant experiences, or they will end up going with the competition, and that's not what we want. And now your customers are also expecting to have the ability to self-serve and companies also now need the ability to improve case deflection to lower their support costs. So now let's take a quick look at some of the various use cases within customer support where you can apply Coveo. So Coveo integrates out of the box with Sales Cloud, Community Cloud, Service Cloud, and App Cloud. And here are the different benefits that these integrations can bring to your business. So first we have agent productivity. Agents can stay in Service Cloud. They don't have to toggle between multiple systems to find the answers they're looking for. This way they save time by being presented with the most relevant results in one place. It also enables them to solve cases more efficiently and with greater accuracy. Second, we have self-service success. By creating more intuitive and relevant search experiences on your community, your customers are going to be able to find answers to their support cases on their own and have a higher success rate, which ultimately is going to deflect cases from your contact center. Third, we have employee proficiency. So you can also make your employees more proficient with an employee intranet or app by empowering them with an entire knowledge your organization possesses at their fingertips in a personalized way based on their context. Finally, sales enablement. So you can actually accelerate revenue contribution and sales rep productivity by delivering content to your reps where they work. So for example, let's say your rep is working on a late stage final financial services opportunity. Coveo can automatically search for financial industry content across file types and sources to save your sales rep time hunting for the most appropriate content to close a deal. So in the end, this can help achieve a shorter sales cycle. So now Brad is actually go, going to go more in depth on this during the demo portion of this webinar and show a couple of our live customer sites. But just to give you an idea, this is a Salesforce help site, which you all probably probably already use. And when I mentioned earlier the Amazon-like Amazon experiences, this is what we're creating for Salesforce users that are trying to self-serve. So you can see at the right here, we're providing intelligent recommendations based on what other users have searched or the training that they ended up taking. We're also doing automatic result boosting. So based on what others you, other users have searched in the past and what they've actually clicked on, we're able to boost the results so the best performing ones are at the top of the search results. Now on the left, uh, we're creating facets so people can find more effectively what they're looking for by facilitating navigation. So users can easily filter the types of content or topics they're looking for and find their answers faster. Finally, at the bottom, you can see an embedded video player. So we're creating rich multimedia thumbnails so you can customize a search interface with more vis visually appealing search results. Now, this slide is just a simple example to compare the standard Salesforce search interface and Coveo. So on the left, you can see that this is basically the standard interface of Salesforce search on Community Cloud. 
here um, you can see the bucketed results with no way to filter down and no customized thumbnails. Now on the right hand, we have Coveo for Salesforce Free Edition, and it offers a customizable experience with faceted navigation, the ability to preview results, thumbnail icons, and tabs for different content sources. So now I want to I want to highlight a few use cases some of our of some of our customers. So here's an example from Logitech, um, which Brad is going to show you the live Logitech website when he goes through the demo. So Logitech is a great self service website. Uh, why? Well, it has a very high volume community. There is about three million users a day. So the search experience there is powered by Coveo. Users, users now have a nice unified view of the data within the Logitech community. They don't even need to leave the community. Everything is right there at their fingertips in one place. Logitech shared with us that within three months of implementing, they saw a 12% increase in the click-through rate alone. This means that users were actually able to find more relevant content and they stayed more engaged within the community. We were also able to bring this live in two months and through this better search experience, Logitech has experienced a 30% improvement in case deflection. Now, this is another support scenario, but this time for engineers working in the service cloud. This is another life site that Brad will cover, but I wanted to give you a little sneak peek. So this is our customer GoPro, and what you're seeing here is their agent console, where the right-hand side panel here has been replaced with the Coveo Insight panel. And so here we're automatically providing support engineers from GoPro the most relevant results based on all their content sources. So for example, as the agent logs the case and begins populating some of the fields, Coveo will recommend content to solve the issue and leverage content across a variety of sources. So these are things such as Salesforce native content, Confluence Wiki, uh, YouTube, and lots of different sources of information. All of that content is served up dynamically. So as the agent is logging the case, we're automatically searching the comments without the agent having to manually search for any of the results content. They can even go through and get a quick view of the document and create a new knowledge article from the results. So it's effectively adhering to the KCS methodology. It's really helping reduce agent turnover and decreasing average call times, as well as increasing NPS and customer satisfaction. So now Coveo and Salesforce have, have helped GoPro boost customer self-service and agent productivity by enabling unified secured search across all of GoPro's in-house FAQ repositories, their confluence data, web pages, and all of this information across their site. So now they're able to maximize case deflection and reduce the number of cases that support agents have to handle every day. So the nice thing about this is whether your agents are answering phone calls, emails, or chats, they're getting all of this relevant information in one unified view. So it means your agents are beco becoming more proficient, better able to solve issues, and over time, the routine issues are resolved via self-service. So this is not only more cost-effective, but it also keeps your agent motivated and engaged in their job. Now, here are some results from our customers that have been able to improve their service experiences with relevance. So as you can see, a lot of our customers have seen a great increase in case deflection and agent proficiency. Overall, we're helping a lot with customer satisfaction when it comes to support experiences. So now, without further ado, I'll let my colleague Brad get started with his demo portion. Great, thank you so much, Clara. So looking forward to demonstrating some of the value points that Clara was describing here. So what I wanna cover for you, uh, as she was describing on some of the slides, was first of all, how for self-service, we can really delight your customers through these personalized recommendations, Coveo providing relevant answers to their questions, powered all by Coveo AI features. We'll definitely take you into that agent experience where we're upskilling those agents. We're quickly helping them to resolve challenging customer issues, again, with our machine learning and AI technologies. And then where I'm starting here is actually in the Coveo administration interface. This is all about connecting to sources of information, viewing actionable analytics. We'll come back around to that. Measuring your success and really about providing continual improvement. 
so as I mentioned, this is where it all begins, is connecting to all of those disparate sources that you have across your organization. And you can see in my instance here, I'm connecting everything from Confluence to Box to Lithium, a full library of connectors available for you. So pretty much any either on-premise or cloud solution that you wanna bring in to, uh, to expose to your different audiences is available to you. And the whole idea is you wanna discover the answers from all these disparate applications. So if we look at, you know, for example, a, um, a Salesforce source here, all of these sources are set up to be very knowledgeable, understand sort of the underlying API of the system that they're connecting to. So for example, when I wanna index Salesforce content, perhaps I wanna come in and say, you know, there's definitely information in, uh, let's say similar cases that an agent might wanna look at. So we wanna be able to search Salesforce cases. And you can see, of course, each connector is gonna vary, but in the case of, for example, connecting to Salesforce, it's literally a pick and choose or a click and choose interface to decide what information should ultimately be indexed, what information do I wanna expose to different audiences. And one of the things that we do when we index this content, of course, we're picking up all of the keywords, all of the metadata and custom attributes that go along with that, but we can also store the underlying security entitlements. So Clara mentioned, for example, maybe we're going to index Salesforce opportunities or information from a Google Drive. We can uh, respect the security to say, you know, Brad is typically entitled to see those opportunities or not, and then they will or will not show up in the actual search results. Covail will respect that same um, search entitlement as well. And so when you set these sources up, you'll typically do that connectivity to them. Once you have the source uh, configured, you can set up a refresh schedule. Um, typically, you've got a lot of sources of information that are changing very frequently. Maybe it's a, a lithium community or a chatter community where new conversations are constantly being published there and you want the index to be very up to date with that. So Coveo can just automatically keep track of that information and keep it very fresh for you. So we've got all of our content in our sources now. It's all unified together. We're gonna to come back to this administration interface, but as promised here, let's actually look at some of these self-service experiences. So this is a Speedbit community. It's lightning. Uh, it's a lightning community, as you can probably tell. Speedbit is a fitness tracker. This is obviously a, a demo instance. Um, but as you can see here in this lightning community, of course, I've got that big search box that we're all accustomed to looking for. We wanna search for content instead of navigating and looking for content. And even before I use that search box, you notice this trending queries and this most popular documents. These are lightning components from Coveo. And what they're doing is using that AI power, those machine learn our machine learning models to say what is trending? You know, what are people finding most helpful as far as documents? What are the queries that are trending? And this is not necessarily just looking at the entire overall audience, but it's looking at my cohorts. Perhaps, you know, I'm logged in so they know what products I own. It's part of my profile. Or maybe am I a end customer versus a reseller? So I'm going to see very different and dynamic trending queries, trend, trending documents, all very relevant and personalized to me from Coveo Analytics and machine learning. Uh, so I've just purchased the, the cool new Blaze Tracker device, but you know, I'm not really sure the heart rate is, is tracking properly. So I need some help on this. First of all, you're seeing some query suggestions, some popular things again through AI being, being recommended to me here. But let's go ahead and start typing in my query. And even as I, in this case, intentionally put in a, a typo, Coveo recognizes that, you know, that you're probably looking at for the word heart, not, you know, the misspelling of heart. And I'm getting these recommendations that are really saying, you know, this is probably a well-phrased question because what Coveo is doing is monitoring the queries that are happening and we're monitoring to see where are their successful outcomes that people have had and then making recommendations based on that. So let's go ahead and let's pick one of these queries here and find out about my blaze and tracking the heart rate. So what we're seeing uh, in the presentation is, first of all, right at the very top here, I've got a unified set of results that are very relevant to me. And by unified, what I'm seeing is I'm pulling from all of those different sources that we want to expose to our end customer audience. Things like video content, you know, knowledge articles certainly are part of this, you know, web content, SharePoint documents, whatever it happens to be. 
These are very relevant because you've heard me say this before, but these are powered by AI. It's through our machine learning that these are bubbling right up to the top. And they're taking into account context, not just what I'm searching for, but again, maybe information about my profile, the type of user I am, the products I own, and so on. We'll also talk towards the end about some of the fine tuning rules that we can do to adjust relevancy and make things personalized to different audiences. Now, as you've noticed on the page here, I've got some different ways of navigating. I've got tabs available to me that are part of the search interface. You notice I have these facets, uh, all based on metadata that's here, and I can go ahead and I can use that to drill into specific areas of content. Maybe I wanna look at either Chatter or Lithium or Jive community content, and I wanna narrow that down and just look at the items that have been marked as resolved. I get all of this flexibility provided for the end user to be able to find that needle in the haystack. Although typically what I find is right there on that first tab, I'm going to have the most relevant items bubbling right up to the top of the page. So if we look at any of this content, we can come in and, and different features are available. I can look at more details on this. I can use what's called our quick view feature which allows me to very rapidly you know, preview. This is a very short document, but this might be a 50 page document. And you see this nice hit navigator right here at the top that's looking at all the query terms I had. And maybe in that 50 page document, the search, the phrase I'm looking for is on page 30 of that. This is going to allow me to pop very quickly through to that area of content and see whether this document is ultimately going to be helpful or if I have to continue looking at other pieces of content. So we've got you know, all of this ability to uh, you know, filter content. You can see some of the other metadata that we've automatically extracted from content, the ability to preview things. And then as I find something that's interesting, that quick view might be good, or perhaps I even wanna drill into, in this case, that underlying Salesforce knowledge article. And of course, there's the article, but this area, once again, is a Coveo component, our recommendation that's providing you know, from machine learning, all of the similar items or items that other people have found helpful when they're looking at this topic area. What's interesting about this is, of course, I got here by using Coveo Search, but even if I came to this page, maybe this is part of a public community page from a public search engine and just landed directly here, I'm still gonna benefit from this related articles from Coveo. It's still going to show me those recommendations that are available to me um, regardless of how I got here. Now, when we come back and look at this, I mentioned earlier that uh, we can use context about the user. And of course, here we're using the keywords and information about the person. Well, this is sort of for demo purposes, but just to, to help explain that a little further, you know, maybe I have different profile attributes, of course, what product I own, what country I'm in, what language I speak, or in this case, am I a brand new customer who's just registered my product? So let's say that I was a new customer. And as soon as I change this, if you notice, the results changed fairly dramatically. What we've done here is we had some fine tuning rules behind the scenes that said, let's put a little more video type of content for a new user to help them get started. Conversely, what if I am a reseller uh, and uh, you know I'm a sales rep at a certain location and I need more information about the product to help sell this product to customers. And in that case, the exact same query still brings up a number of similar results, but it's a lot heavier on documentation and things that that reseller might be interested in. So you can personalize that content behind the scenes. Now, if you're wondering, this whole experience, the look and feel, it can be fully styled to your brand, um, whether it's a lightning community, classic community, maybe it's Coveo on your marketing site. Um, when you're setting this up, you'll simply drag a uh, component using the uh, Lightning Builder onto the page that you want it to be displayed on. You'll make some customizations and then we give you this full drag and drop user interface editor. So this is a, a sandbox version that I'm working on making some changes to right now. You can see uh, I've made some changes, for example, to the community tab where I've got a different uh, choice in how I wanna view that content. I can come in here and I can use something very similar to the page layout editor in Salesforce to actually lay out and have a real-time preview of the page and what I would like that to look like for an end user. So lots of flexibility to certainly make it fit your brand for your end customers. All right, so back to the scenario here. I've got some good answers around my heart rate, but 
you know, some customers are just not going to perform that search. They're going to head directly to that contact us page. Um, so, you know, this is really where Salesforce's web to case capability typically comes in and customers are going to create a case where they have their questions. Well, here we're using web to case out of the box, but of course, as you see on the right hand side, Coveo is playing to help those customers to self-serve before your expensive agents have to get involved. So as I begin to come in here and start to select some information, um, maybe I'm interested in, uh, you know, I have a question around the sleep tracking feature. You're noticing even as I'm typing on the right hand side, you know, the, the results are actually changing automatically. So, you know, I have a question around deleting the alarm. Of course I could submit that, but now I've got access to all of this unified content from multiple sources that's available to me. And so, you know, right here at the top, this looks like it'll be helpful. I can certainly drill into that and decide is that helpful or not. Uh, I could further filter that information down. So I could go in, oh, maybe I just want a, a knowledge article, a how-to article, or perhaps I learn better with YouTube videos, that sort of thing. So the idea is uh, we can measure this and understand what are the questions that we were able to answer through this case deflection from Coveo, which were the ones that ultimately ended up where someone did have to submit a case. And towards the end of the demo, I'll come back and I'll show you how we have really rich analytics to continually improve and allow customers more and more to self-service without having to involve your expensive agents. All right, so this was a demo example. Um, Clara mentioned we have numerous public self-service sites that we can point you to, talk to your uh, Coveo account team. Uh, and, and in fact, I'm gonna make a little switch. She had mentioned Logitech. I'm actually gonna show you VMware instead. So VMware, longtime Coveo customer has been using Coveo Search, especially for their partner or reseller communities. And they very recently uh, released self-service search. And they're also doing a lot of things with agent search that I'm gonna show you in a bit. Here is their self-service search community. Go ahead and try this out for yourself after we're done the demo. So even before I perform that search again, you're seeing AI powered recommendations delivering results that are gonna be very relevant based on past searches that I've made. And you notice in this case, I haven't actually even logged in. There isn't, you know, I haven't identified who I am, but just based on my history of searches, maybe based on other product pages that I've clicked on around VMware, we're getting nice recommendations, very relevant to the areas that I'm interested in. They're remembering some of my previous searches here. So let's go ahead and just, you know, I have a question around upgrading the, the vRealize product. As you saw with the Speedbit demo, I've got content, I'm sorry, I have query suggestion examples here. So let's go ahead and perform a search to, to look at upgrading vRealize. Now some interesting things that you see on this page, this item at the top, this alert is powered by a Coveo feature that we call triggers. So that uh, conditionally we can have different statements that say, you know, if somebody puts in certain words, like maybe the word upgrade, I wanna boost certain content or I wanna post, you know, very important messages. And actually this alert and this topmost item, you'll see are kind of sticky here because VMware has put some rules in place to inform customers about that type of content and to make them very aware of that. So when I come in here, you know, they're, they're focusing a lot on knowledge articles. Uh, they've sort of reversed this where most of the time people will find what they lead in a knowledge article. But if I go to the all sources, I get that unified view once again here. So maybe, maybe I learn a lot by seeing what other uh, VMware users are talking about in the community. So I can narrow using those facets around communities. I can come in here, I could decide, well, you know, this looks like it might be interesting to me and drill into a specific item. Interesting, I noticed that they've uh, they've actually just made a change <laughs> since I'd previously played around with this demo. Uh, they, their quick view is not appearing right at the moment here, but we'll come back and show you some other examples of that. But I could drill into things that are very uh, applicable to what I'm looking for. Here's another uh, area in VM where you notice how granular the metadata that we've picked up with Coveo is to allow an end user to narrow down the results. So, uh, you know, instead of just using keywords, I can use metadata for saying things like, you know, I own a certain product, so I only want the items that are applicable to that product. I only want the items that are applicable to a very specific version of this product as well. And so now, you know, if you look through this, you know, maybe I just care about the knowledge articles, we're getting things like upgrading from version 6.2 to version 7.3. And again, I can drill down into these items 
And as we saw in some earlier examples, even when I'm looking at things like a knowledge article, Coveo AI is coming into play one more time. And it's saying, by the way, you may also be interested in these similar items at the same time. So very helpful to, to answer my immediate question, kind of expand that to other areas that might be of interest as well. All right, catch my breath for a second. So you saw VMware. Uh, I encourage you to look at the Logitech one on your own, GoPro as well. Uh, here's one you're probably very familiar with as uh, Salesforce customers. Every time you come out to the help.salesforce.com site, you're using Coveo. And Cove or Salesforce is using our AI-powered recommendations in numerous places. Uh, you see things like this top support resources. This list is dynamic. So as they put out a new release, you might see new items showing up on here that people are finding to be interesting at that time. If I use a, uh, if I put in a query, like let's search for dashboard, you're seeing those familiar AI powered query suggestions coming up. And of course, being familiar with this, you recognize we, in this case, Salesforce is indexing multiple knowledge sources, things like you know app exchange listings where I have rich metadata where I can narrow down content by, by language and by rating, et cetera. I can look at you know developer topics, training topics, articles and so on. Once again, power recommendations powered by Coveo Machine Learning. And when I drill into something like articles, of course, I could further narrow my topics down using all that metadata and those facets. But this familiar experience of going all the way down into a knowledge article and seeing things like recommended learning, um, other related resources, and what Covea is doing with our AI and our machine learning models here is we're looking at the, the say, the last 10 visits that I've done and the interest that I've had, and then comparing that against our machine learning models and making these recommendations for me automatically. So very powerful to, to help find content. Salesforce is using us in multiple locations, uh, including their agents are using us. We'll get in and show you what that experience feels like in just a minute. As a matter of fact, let's go there right now. So this is going back to our speed bit scenario. So moving away from the self-service examples, Claire talked about how other audiences such as your employees in an intranet or your service agents in Lightning Console also have access to all of these unified search and AI powered capabilities. So here I'm an agent. I've got my long list of cases that I'm typically working on. I'm in the Lightning Console as I mentioned. Now, instead of seeing maybe the typical knowledge one that we'd see on the right-hand side, we're seeing Coveo surfacing up all of these unified sources of content. And what's happening here is, of course, we're going to continue to show Salesforce knowledge articles. It's very valuable for content. So I suspect many of you are using that as your primary knowledge base, but we're also now surfacing up areas from, you know, maybe it's a chatter community, maybe it's Jive, Jira, Lithium, we're showing things like you know, maybe uh, on-premise files that you have, SharePoint sources, et cetera. And when we look at this All tab here, you're noticing the items that are showing up at the top. You notice as soon as I opened the case, I didn't have to perform any searching. It was performed for me automatically. And these highly relevant items just bubbled up right to the top. And how did Coveo determine what was most relevant? Well, in this case, we looked at all of the clues that the case was giving us, maybe clues about the user that submitted this case. So what do I mean by that? I mean things like, what's the subject? What's the description? What's the product that this customer, in, when they submitted this case, has told us about? All of that information feeds in here and drives these very relevant results for me. So as we look at this, you know, I can do things like I can look at, oh, maybe I just care about closed cases. And I could say, let me not reinvent the wheel. Let's look back because someone solved a similar problem a year ago. And I could you know, view the entire chatter feed around that. I could, I could see which items were attached to that item to help resolve it. So I can go back in time and look at other items that are helpful. Um, I can do things like attach any item, uh, regardless of whether it's from Salesforce or from an external source to this case so that it shows up, it's available here now, it's available a year from now if I go back and look and say, how was this case resolved? So this item looks interesting. Um, you know, and if you've looked at this one, this is a question around, you know, some issues around the, the device skipping floors. And I can see right here, some of my recommendations. This one looks interesting. It's a brand new uh, version. It looks like we've published. 
So I'll use that quick view. I'll read through some of the hits and decide, is this going to be helpful? I see there's some fixes around floor climb. So again, I can do things like, of course, I can attach this, but I can also use other custom actions. I could post that to the chatter feed. Maybe in your community, you're using the, the chatter feed, or more likely you're uh, sending results to your customers through email. So I can use uh, Salesforce's nice email templates. You know, here's the first item I wanna attach. So that looks helpful. Uh, maybe I wanna actually give them the instructions around how to update their device. So I'll perform another search directly in here. And when I perform this updating search, you know, we could see, well, you know, maybe uh, this looks pretty interesting. Again, I could quick view that, or I can also continually attach multiple items, send that off to the customer to answer their question. Now, speaking of this customer and answering their question, one of the things that's not exposed or that's not enabled in this demo, but a lot of our customers will do is actually show their agents the history around what that customer was doing on the community, on the self-service site before they submitted this case. So it's also very helpful because of course, we're gonna show you that in the analytics, but surface that to your agents, they get a better picture on the full question the customer's asking, they get a better picture on maybe the items that that customer has already looked at and so on. So that's also you know, very valuable to give the customer, or sorry, the agents that visibility. So um, this one here, it's just a little bit of an animated GIF, but I wanted to highlight a brand new feature that we've had, although we've, we've enabled this for a number of customers in the past, but we've got out of the box live agent integration as well. So if you're using Salesforce's chat capabilities, what you're seeing here is instead of through a case, this is a chat conversation that an agent would answer. And if you watch what happens as the end user continues to input more information, that acts as clues or context that Coveo picks up and drives very relevant search results to narrow what's going to be appropriate and what I want to share as a chat agent with my end user. Once I find the content I want, just like you saw before here over on the right hand side, I've got custom actions. In this case, instead of sending an email or sending to the chatter post, I'm actually going to actually just chat that out to that customer. So nice feature uh, that, that we can demonstrate more about. Uh, so we've been talking a lot about self-service scenarios, but Claire made mention of other scenarios like intranet or sales folks using this as well. So very briefly here, you know, maybe I'm a, a salesperson, I'm working on some late stage opportunities. Let me go ahead and open up one of those opportunities. And in this case, Coveo is really showing me things about not so much around knowledge articles, but perhaps, you know, here's some similar opportunities. Uh, I might want to narrow this down by the industry that my customer is in, so I've narrowed that content. Um, I might want to look at other documents like RFPs or proposals. And once again, I get all this filtering capability. I get all that relevance provided, in this case, by an opportunity. So many places that you can take advantage of Coveo beyond customer service scenarios. So we've shown you self-service, we've shown you uh, agent service, we've shown you a salesperson. How is all this configured, right? I showed you a little bit around the user interface, but let's go back to that admin tool where we began. And you think about all this AI power and you start to wonder, do I need to be a search scientist to use this stuff? Well, the short answer is no, it's very straightforward to enable that personalized AI powered relevancy. So what I have here is back in that admin interface, a feature we call query pipelines, and I can set up one of these pipelines for each end user interface. And as you can see, looking at the cross the top here, these are different rules that will execute for every query that takes place. So the first area, machine learning, I can go in, I can add additional machine learning models. Let's just look at an existing model here and see what was involved in setting this up. Pretty straightforward, not a lot of complexity to create it, a lot of power in what it delivers, but very easy to enable this. So things like setting how frequently do I wanna enable a train, you know, an update to my machine learning model? How much data should it ingest? Uh, if you look back at Salesforce again, they'll have places where they'll make recommendations that are very short term on what's trending this week, as well as on that same page, they'll show recommendations over maybe the last year's worth of content. So it's sort of more long-term trending. So you have that option. Setting this up here, you notice, and, and basically what happens is every item in our search results has a score behind the scenes. All this is doing is saying, how much do you want machine learning to impact 
that score? How much do you want it to adjust the relevance um, the, of the items that are appearing? And then you can make this conditional as well. So you can slice that model so it's appropriate to different audiences when they're performing their queries. So machine learning, straightforward to set up. Other features, you know, synonyms that can be created very easily. Featured results, this is a nice one. The marketing people love this one. Uh, you know, it's like, well, we've got a brand new feature we want everyone to know about, but we want to only tell them about it when a query contains certain words. So we're boosting items right up to the top of the results. We can also do things like use metadata. And here you're seeing a metadata field. Uh, lithium message is solution equals true. What that's doing is it's saying for lithium messages, if end users have gone in and indicated, you know, this message had a good solution, it answered my question, that's the content I want to boost. I'm putting a, a boosting modifier, or if it was never answered, you know, it's not going to show up quite as close to the top of the list. It's going to be, you know, not quite in my face as much because these items are going to be more helpful for me. You know, lots of other features in here. I can filter content even, you know, for certain audiences and so on. Lots of power without having to, you know, understand very complex search technology. We make that easy for you. So finally, you know, why would you make or, or when would you make these adjustments? Well, you typically won't just randomly come in here and start adjusting things. You'll learn from the analytics. And what happens with our analytics is I like to say we put wet paint on the feet of our users. We're tracking every search they perform. We're tracking those facets or that metadata that they're selecting, the tabs, how they narrow content, what they're clicking on. And then we expose that here for, for administrators to continually improve on the search results. You can slice this by different audiences. So here I'm looking at maybe an employee dashboard. I can see things like what are the top sources that, that these employees are finding helpful. But what's really interesting is what, what are the most popular things they're searching for? And of course, I can look at this in different time frames, you know, today versus yesterday, this month versus last month, and so on. So lots of power here. Um, if I look at some other examples, you know, here we can see things like top documents, top queries, even which tabs, in other words, which sources people are finding information useful from. Coveo does a ton of work around monitoring what are the phrases and keywords that people are using. And you see the up and down here, and you can also express this as a percentage, but we can say, you know, this week over last week, 293 more people are asking about Blaze. So, you know, perhaps there's an issue or perhaps we want to create some new content around that. Coveo also does a lot of work around automatically monitoring relevancy. And what I mean by that is, are people finding the results they're looking for right at the top? That's what we want, or at least in the top few items. And this is a formula I can drill into this. And the whole idea is to highlight any issues where people are having to, you know, go all the way to page two to find content. That's not good. So perhaps, you know, uh, adjusting something, adding a synonym, creating some new content, that sort of thing will help to resolve this. Uh, similarly, content gaps. Where are the queries where no results are being returned? You know, perhaps I've got a lot of people putting in this as a query. Maybe that's a serial number or a model number, and they're not finding results. Very easy for me to go in, create a synonym. Of course, machine learning will also kick in and help with those kind of scenarios as well. And almost done here before we open this up for questions, but you saw me use the case deflection capability. So that's a, an area where you can create a lot of value for your end customers, but you can also see significant cost savings where agents don't need to be involved in resolving some of the simpler issues. So you're seeing here dashboards around how many cases were created versus the good news where they were deflected. And what were those savings that we were able to incur? We can even do things like break down you know, by products. Your product managers might be very interested in this. And then if I get to the, a very granular level, I can even look at what were the top queries that led to case creation where people had to create cases. Very clear candidates for me to go in, create some new content, hopefully allow people to self-serve in the future. Or the good news on this side here, what were those top queries? that led to successful deflection. People asking these questions or using these keywords were able to self-serve, and then even which documents you know, applied in both use cases as well. So we covered a lot of content very quickly. Um, hopefully you saw that value in the self-service communities, uh, any other environments like an intranet, agent view, sales view, and then how you can continually improve on your search experience. 
with that, I think we have a couple of closing slides that I'll open and uh, we'll pass it back to you, Clara. Maybe you've got some questions may have come in as well. Thank you so much, Brad. Um, hello again, everyone. So I just have a couple of slides before we uh, go into questions. So now would be a good time to uh, type in your questions so we can answer them after, after these slides. Um, so as I said earlier, we have the free edition, which creates a more intuitive search experience powered by machine learning on top of the Salesforce search index. So it only searches the Salesforce content, but you get a better search interface, customizable drag and drop components, Kaveo machine learning and analytics. And uh, yes, it is free forever. Um, if you would like to connect to external content outside of Salesforce, you then need to look at the Pro or Enterprise Editions, which are available for Community Cloud, App Cloud, and Service Cloud. Uh, the Pro Edition comes with a bundle of cloud connectors, such as Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, Box SharePoint, Online, YouTube, and Web Sources. If you need to connect to on-premise systems or have complex requirements, we then recommend, recommend the Enterprise Edition. Um, if you are not a Salesforce user and would like to know more about it, please reach out to us and we'll follow up with you. Um, Brad, you can switch to the next, thank you. Um, so now is where the real fun begins. Um, so you can get started right away and download uh, the free edition on App Exchange and install in just a couple of minutes. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and our experts will be happy to support you. Um, so now we'll be ready for some questions. So we have a couple um, in the queue and uh, you can still type yours um, in the panel. All right, so first question, how do you determine from a customer's visit where the gaps are in the knowledge base? Yeah, good question. Uh, you, you saw the, the dashboards and the analytics. So what's happening is for every visit, we monitor the entire session, the entire visit that's taken place. So uh, if I go in, I perform a search, first of all, uh, within that actual query, one of the things that we re return is how many results were brought back to the end user. So uh, obviously in the case of a content gap, that might actually say that zero results were brought in. Maybe they've used a real obscure term, where we haven't authored anything, or it may be, oh, there was only five results. Now, so that'll make it very clear for you when you run the dashboards on where there were gaps in the content, but also, you know, when people are clicking into content, I talked about that relevancy, and are they finding content right up at the top of the results? We make that very clear as well. So uh, it stitches together everything from each search to the clicks, to the narrowing of content and so on. So we give that full kind of customer journey visibility in the dashboards. Amazing, thank you, Brad. Another question we have, how does Coveo work with a knowledge base in multiple languages? Yeah, good question. Uh, and if you've used the uh, Salesforce help example, uh, if you've ever checked there, you'll, you may notice Salesforce is actually indexing multiple languages of content. Another really good one to look at is Dell's support site, their self-service site. Uh, in, in the case of Dell, you can actually go in and say, well, you know, maybe Japanese is my primary language. So what happens is when we index content, either if you've tagged it as a certain language, and even if you haven't tagged it as a certain language, Coveo will automatically recognize, does this document contain, you know, Spanish and Japanese and what are the character sets? Some documents will contain multiple languages and we'll also show that and or record that information. So then we can expose that through the end user interface. You might have noticed that in some of the examples where you can show a facet or a filter on the left side that says, you know, I just care about Spanish or Japanese or whatever. Or in the case of, as I said with Dell, if you've selected that your browser language is Japanese, they'll detect that and they'll automatically then surface up and boost content that's in your desired language as well. So make it very personalized to what matters most to you. And of course, most of our customers will allow you to break out of that. Maybe they have a small set of knowledge articles in Japanese, and I might also speak English, so I can still, of course, look beyond my native language if I choose to. But the idea is index it, recognize it, and then expose that very easily to end customers. Great, thank you. 
Um, another question is deflection in measure based solely on the customer being steered away from a case submission form or is it also based on other actions? Yeah, interesting. Um, so you saw in the deflection form I had, I think all that I showed was a submit button. So of course, in that case, uh, it's pretty clear that, uh, well, if they hit the submit button, we have not successfully deflected. Now, we have multiple customers that will measure that in different ways. Some of them will say, well, all right, if you leave that page after clicking content, and again, we will recognize that you've actually clicked something versus maybe just performing a search and, and walking away without an answer. So if you've clicked on some content after searching, you unload the page, an unload event is one of the items that will allow us to say, well, we can assume that a deflection took place. Now, we also have some customers that will do more of a confirmed deflection. In other words, they will provide a button on that case uh, submission screen or case deflection screen that, that allows the customer to say, yes, this answered my question, or perhaps a cancel button to say, again, you can kind of confirm if they hit that cancel button, that it's a, a pretty clear confirmation that they were able to successfully deflect. In all of those instances, and we can break that down and we can show you each of those, oh, they unloaded the page, they actually clicked the submit, they clicked the confirmation that they solved it, uh, all of the analytics will expose that information to you. Great, thank you. Um, we just have a couple questions left. How is case deflection measured without knowing who the customer is if your site serves unauthenticated users? Yeah, I, I didn't really make too much mention of this, uh, although you saw in the VMware example, I had not authenticated, I had not logged in. Even Salesforce's help example allows you to log in and they can personalize content. Um, so Coveo will work regardless of whether you're an anonymous user or whether you are authenticated. Uh, in the case of deflection, uh, sorry, the case deflection screen, uh, of course, if you are going to submit a case, Salesforce would probably require you to enter additional information like your email address along with that so they can get back to you. Uh, but the, the actual measurement of that works very similarly to what I was describing before. We're still recognizing that we've got a user, we've got what's called a visitor ID for that person. You can choose to actually capture their email or their profile, although most customers want to keep that fairly anonymous. Um, but uh, so you've got that very similar kind of tracking you would whether they're logged in or not and whether they've submitted a case, whether they've walked away satisfied with a deflection. Hopefully that helped. Yes, thank you. Another question we have, uh, how frequent, frequently does Caveo index new content? Uh, the short answer is it depends. It's fully up to you when you configure your content sources. So uh, when I started, you might have noticed that I pointed to those schedules. Uh, we have some customers that have contents or especially things like communities that are frequently changing. People are constantly publishing new messages and so on, where you might want to say, you know, every five minutes, I want to have Coveo updated to look at what's new. Well, what's interesting there is that for most sources, their API will allow us to say what's changed, what's changed, what's new. So we can look at the Delta and very quickly just pick up the latest and greatest, add that to the index of items. Of course, you could do a full rebuild if you chose to, but that refresh works very well. Now we have some customers that have certain sources where maybe it's a legacy system and they're no longer using that system. They don't want to pay maintenance to a vendor on it anymore. They could do a one-time indexing of that content literally pull a plug on that server that's sitting in a back room somewhere and never re-index it. But in that case, you saw that quick view capability that allows me still to view those items continually, uh, even if I don't perform a refresh. So you'll see you know, different refresh schedules depending on what your needs are, and it can be set up per source of content. Great, thank you so much, Brad, for these um, explanations. Um, I see that we are now out of time, so I think now would be a great time to wrap up this session. Um, but for those of you who had a question not answered during, during today's session, we will uh, follow up with you directly and make sure we answer your questions. Um, on behalf of the Coveo team, I'd like to thank you for attending today's session um, of live demonstration of AI-powered search for Salesforce. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.